Welcome to the Hyper Growth Zone podcast. This is your go-to resource for personal growth, mastering communication, and influencing and persuasion techniques that will help you unleash the full potential of yourself and others. Here is your host, Alex Morgan. Welcome to another episode of the Hyper Growth Zone podcast. My name is Alex Morgan, and I'm a master trainer of hypnosis and NLP. And on this episode, we're going to discuss some different ways that you can become really better at communicating, ways that you can improve your communication skills so that you benefit, so that you benefit at work, so your colleagues benefit, so you benefit at home, so your spouse, your children, your partner, whoever, really anyone around you can benefit. And really with anything that we do on this podcast, any skill that we have, that we put out into the world, that we use our time, money, and energy for, we want it to be win-win. So when you're using these communication skills, think how you can win and think how the other person can win. Because if you're using communication skills and you're winning, chances are the other person is winning too. And they'll probably introduce you to other people who want to win and they'll have good things to say about you because people, they don't necessarily always remember what you do or what you say. However, people will always remember how you make them feel. So if you can really build deep rapport with people when you're communicating with them, they're going to get that good feeling, that feeling where they're almost thinking, gosh, feels like I've known this person forever. Do I? I just met them though. They'll get that good feeling inside of them. I'm sure you've talked to someone before and you got that really good feeling where it just feels so good as you're speaking to someone. So here's some different skills that you can use. That was just a brief introduction to show you why you probably want to learn this. So communicating, the thing with communication to consider is a lot of people think it's all the words that we use when in fact it isn't. Communication, 55% of it is your physiology. 38% is the tone of voice that you're using. And only 7% is the words or the language that you use. So you want to take it into account all three of these things, not just the words that you use. However, if you really listen and implement these skills, then you can make that 7% the difference that makes a huge difference for yourself and for others. So the first skill, you have to listen. Imagine that. Well, you're listening to a podcast, so I know you probably have good listening skills, However, if you really want to have effective communication with people, then you need to listen and you need to show them that you're listening. Maybe this means paraphrasing things back to them, asking clarifying questions to demonstrate that you really understand. And this shows that you have some compassion, some empathy. You're really curious and interested in what this person is actually saying. That's the thing. You need to go into all of your interactions, really even before you start communicating. You need to get into a nice state. So how you feel internally. How do you want to feel during this communication? Do you want to feel confident? Do you want to be curious? Do you want to have love? Do you want to have understanding? Probably depends who you're talking to. However, it's always good to be curious because if you're curious, then you'll ask clarifying questions. And that will show the person that you're listening. A lot of people, they want to go into conversations and the first thing they want to do is just start opening their mouth and talking and talking. However, if you listen, this will really help you and it will show the other person that you actually care what they're saying. And that'll build 
rapport with that person. So use a good amount of eye contact and show your body language. Sit up. Notice how they're sitting, their posture. Notice how they're talking and match their rhythm of their voice. Match how they're breathing. Match their posture. So these are all easy ways to build rapport. And these are all really easy, easy ways to show that you're listening, that you care, that you're interested in what they're saying, that you're curious. And it's okay to have a willingness to experiment, to try different things. The next skill is you want to be assertive in your communication. This will help build trust in your relationships. I'm not saying that you need to be aggressive and so strong on your points. However, sound like an authority. If you're speaking to customers, put some power words in there. The, hey, customer, the reason I'm telling you this is because our most successful customers, I'm not saying, well, maybe some of these people that I work with have this strategy. No, our most successful customers do this. The best customers that we have. In fact, we work with hundreds of customers that do this. What sounds better if I went, oh, you know, maybe this solution will work for you. Or you know what? Our most successful customers do this. So be assertive when you're communicating. This shows that you have confidence in what you're thinking and what you're feeling. And this also helps build boundaries because then you're not afraid to get your point across. Hey, I would like this. I feel this way. I understand. You can use some I statements as well. And do it in a respectful way, of course. Always consider the needs of the other people. So, of course, if we're talking to customers, the only way we're going to make the sale is if we understand what they need. So keep their needs in mind. If we're talking to our friends, of course, we want to relay what we're saying to their needs. We're talking to our spouse, our children, our family, whoever else, our colleagues. We're using this at work. We want to also keep their needs. However, it's good to also be assertive. This confidence will show that we actually care about getting them the results that they want. Another skill for really building effective communication that really will help your relationships is a way to resolve conflicts easily. Now, I used to be a person I would always, I wouldn't confront anyone. I wouldn't want to get into any sort of conflicts. Now, I listen to everyone with an open mind. I show that I have a willingness to listen. And I focus on being flexible in my communication, in my attitude, the effort that I put in and how I feel so that I can actually come up with acceptable solutions for both people. So you need to have a way to manage your emotions. Don't let stress or anxiety get the best of you. While the person is in conflict and they're saying something, focus on your breathing. Focus on your body relaxing. There's no need to just open your mouth and get defensive. All that's going to do is escalate the situation. And there's another frame that we can use to kind of resolve conflicts. We don't want to say, I understand. And we don't want to use the word, but. Because if you tell someone, your boss, let's say, they're, hey, you know what, next time I want you to do the report this way. And if you say, hey, I understand what you're saying, but whatever you say before but, it's negated by the word but. So it means you didn't actually understand. It doesn't really show that you really have too much concern for what your boss said. And this is the same for your family, your friends, colleagues, whoever it is. So instead of using I understand and but to resolve conflicts, an easier way is to use an agreement frame. So you can use the words, hey, I agree, I appreciate, I respect. So the example of the boss, the boss tells you, hey, you know what? 
Next time you do the report, I want you to have it in this format. It will be much easier for all the teams to read it. And you just say, you know what? I agree with you. Thanks so much. I respect what you are saying. And, you know, I appreciate that you told me this. And I will do my best to do it like this next time. So you can use it in any sort of conflict. Let's say you're in a conflict with your spouse or partner. Does it mean that you actually agree with everything you're saying? You could say, I agree. I get it. I agree. You feel that way. And I appreciate you letting me know. And I re would respect if you would allow me to say something now just to show you how much I care so we can actually resolve this. So this kind of, instead of taking the conflict head on, it's not necessarily passive, but it lightens the emotion a bit. And if you're coming from a relaxed state where you focused on your breathing, like I was saying, then your voice won't be in this tonality, in a conflict tonality. It'll be nice, just like I'm kind of talking here. Hey, you know what? I agree. I appreciate you letting me know. I respect you so much as a person. And then say what you have to say. Because you lighten it up a bit. You show them that you care. And that moves right into the next skill. Empathy. If you can show people that you have empathy in their communication, this means that you're putting, you're willing to put yourself in that person's shoes to really try to see, hear, feel what they're feeling. You're showing them that how they see something and how they remember hearing the event and how they feel about it, about it is totally okay for them. So I encourage you to practice empathy when it's appropriate. You don't need to be empathetic all the time. That would be exhausting. And it's probably not the best thing for you mentally and physically. However, when it calls for it. When someone really, really wants you to know like, hey, this is how I'm feeling. That's when you can show empathy. One of the ways that I like to show empathy is I ask open-ended questions. Explain to me exactly how you're feeling and why. Can you tell me a bit more about this? Because I just want to really see here and feel you know, what's going on here. Ah, uh -huh, that's how you remembered the situation. What did that make you feel? So you can pull more information out of them. When you ask open-ended questions, then you really know that this is how they feel about it. Now, the last skill, this is clear and respectful communication. And this is super important to me. Because you want to build trust and you want to strengthen relationships. I'm sure that's why you're listening. So your tone, the voice needs to be respectful. Have a good timing on your communication effectiveness. Don't be talking the whole time. Also have a willingness to listen and be really clear and respectful when you're replying. And be mindful of how others communicate. If you know someone's going to tell, you know, they like to talk and talk and talk, be mindful of this before you go into the conversation so you're prepared for it. If you know someone needs to be more concise, then don't ramble on to this person. Just say, hey, what's the purpose of this conversation? That's one way I like to be clear on the communication. I ask that question when we're going back and forth. I say, hey, for what purpose are we talking about this? And then that helps you get to what does the person actually want to get out of that communication. So then you can gear the communication to there. You can be really clear on what's the outcome that we want. And that'll help the person feel really safe and secure in the communication. Because you don't want to ramble on and go on and on and on, cause stress to another person because you aren't clear in your communication. And then all of a sudden have no purpose have no outcome, have no like end goal in mind of what this 
is wanting to achieve. And this happens all the time in business. Let's say I'm working with a company and one of the people that I'm consulting comes up to me and says, hey, we've been working with this customer that you know about on this account. And, you know, there was a big problem. And they tell me this big, big, long story. And then I ask the question, okay, so what happened after, let's say, two, three, four, five minutes? And the person says, oh, nothing. It was it was all resolved. So they could have been much more clear and concise in the communication without having me to think, oh, what's the problem here for five minutes? They could have said, hey, Alex, guess what? That important client we're working with, there was a problem. However, we already resolved it. However, I just want to fill you in quickly on what's going on and then just summarize the situation. Be clear and respectful. The other person, when they're communicating with you, they're respecting your time. They're listening to what you have to say. However, just because you're talking, that doesn't give you all the time in the world to say whatever you want. You need to be respectful of their time as well. So be clear in your communication. So these are some different ways that you can build better relationships, whether that's at work, home, friends, family, colleagues. And using these skills can really help you boost your career, boost your business, have more loving relationships, and even build a better social circle. So thanks so much for listening. Let me know what you want me to talk about next. Go ahead and rate the podcast wherever you are listening. And thanks again so much for listening. And I hope to see you on the next episode.